Hi. Yes, it's magic woo-woo debunking time again. We've got one of these power-saving devices. 30 bucks on eBay buys you this whiz-bang magical woo-woo device that apparently saves you up to 50% on your power bills. And if it sounds familiar, it's because I've debunked um, something, well, a much simpler version of this before, which turned out to be, spoiler alert, just a power factor correction capacitor inside a box with a lead on it. And that's it. Um, and I'll link in the video down below at the end and up here in the cards. Click on there if you haven't seen it. And that explains how those things are just absolutely BS and they don't do anything but this one look at this this is super intelligent digital energy saving equipment adopting the most advanced intelligent digital technology to save energy save electric power resources protect the environment surge protection <laughs> they've got a mob in there maybe improve the power factor oh, of course because there's probably just a power factor correction capacitor in this side this thing spoiler um stabilize electrical current protect the appliances and prolong their life easy to use maintenance free it's <laughs> probably jack all in it fully compliant with safety standards new digital german technology german in lowercase hi to all my german viewers it's got german technology in it it's got to be good. Save electricity, save money, benefiting you and your environment from the saving experts. Saving electricity means saving money. Saving money means earning money. <laughs> In the process of development of recyclable economy, the hindering factor rests on the approach to reduce the consumption of resources. The fundamental principle of power compensation is the parallel connection of capacitive power loading device. They say it right on the box, it's a power factor correction capacitor. And I've done the previous video on why that is just not going to do much, if anything, for you. So I probably don't want to go through that again. Including inductive power loading device in the electric circuit. Whenever the capacitive load discharged, the other part, inductive load, would be charged and vice versa. Energy is interchanged between them. Part of energy charged to the inductive power loading device is compensated by the energy just discharged from the capacitive power loading device. Instant compensation particularly refers to the compensation made to the endpoint electric apparatus installation of the device would be at the power source near the apparatus in the circuit the device is low cost small in size highly effective and can be installed easily it would be essential to implementation of power saving feature local balanced current improve the quality of power supply provided to the endpoint electric apparatus yeah because they think a capacitor does that if they lift the effectiveness of power usage or reduce the amount lost ah uh, yeah hang on what's that i can smell yeah i think you can smell it too that was bullshit bullshit detected take precautions Level Defcon 5. So, yep, it says right on the box, it's basically a power <laughs> factor correction uh, capacitor. Oh, look, it's in a sealed for our protection. Saving experts. Oh, it's the upgrade edition. Local compensator for home electric apparatus. <laughs> I was going to say it's homo electric. We did that in a previous video. 90 to 250 volt universal. And look, it's got a LED display on it. It, it, it has the proper approved uh, Aussie plug on it with the insulation. Beauty. I'll give you a couple of fuses and say the use of manual. <laughs> And by the way, this seems to be available in like uh, different like form factors and things like that. Certainly in this form factor, it's got like you can get them in countless different silk screens and from different uh, manufacturers in quote marks. Um, but yeah, they all come out of the same one hung low uh, kitchen in China. So useful load at 2500 watts. This is supposedly a 98 kilowatt version it doesn't like what is you know what does that even mean anyway um yeah let's go so i believe the other form factor versions are just going to be identical to this they're just repackaging it they all seem to have like the three digit uh display on them what is that like display the mains voltage or something like that or just displays a woo woo number who knows oh we should actually hang on should read the manual 
It's got high-tech components. It ensures the inhibiting effect of surge current and pulse voltage. Extra power consumption effectively prevents the impact of wattless power load of the electrical generation. <laughs> effectively reduce the elimination of transient current convex wave. Improved power factor. Yeah, that it's going to do maybe if you've got an inductive load because putting a capacitor on a capacitive load is going to make your power factor worse. Purification circuit pollution, improve the quality of power, so new approach, blah, blah, waste energy, blah, blah. Oh, look, we've got little diagrams there, before installing, after installing. <laughs> yeah. Product efficacy, the electrical state-of-the-art technology, active surveillance of your home office applications to improve power factor, because it's digital, it's got to do all this active surveillance stuff. <laughs> to reduce the loss clean lines, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, it says 50 to 35 percent on here whereas all the marketing on the ebay ad was uh, like 30 to 50 percent wow stored energy for 10 seconds so the low current constant voltage and stabilized <laughs> yeah right so what capacitor is in here and there's no bleed resistor on it probably do not open or self-repair <laughs> bugger that it's all just bullshit. But power factor correction is real. While it's a thing, as with all these bullshit products, there's a kernel of truth to them. And then they, in a practical sense, um, it does nothing. Because in most countries, I believe anyway, you're not going to pay for bad power factor industrial electricity is different that's why you know big factories and things they will have like banks of power factor correction capacitors if they've got lots of motor loads and things like that but for your home it's not going to do anything if anything it's going to make it worse with your modern products so we're in like flynn can we push that out oh geez hang up oh there we go yep yeah, we're in there it is <laughs> <laughs> no insulation on the uh, just the main straight in the cord clamp it's fair, fairly decent bit of hot snot there gotta get your obligatory hot snot and it just goes straight into the board that's pretty how you're doing um, the case is not earthed um, at all and this is not a double insulated appliance so therefore um, it's got the earth pin and they've just chopped off the earth wire as a website, we're going to have to look that up. Sounds legit. SZJFHY.net. <laughs> well, let's just have a look at this board here for a second. We've got this metal can on here, which is actually floating. If you look here, it's floating and it's floating around here. But look, this trace goes over here. This goes over to the neutral. I'm assuming that they've actually wired it incorrectly. I'll actually check that. Hang on. Yeah, I just checked that that, that is actually connected through the neutral pin. But if the active and neutral on your power uh, point is swapped, for example, which is a not uncommon fault, it happens, um, and things can still work, in quote marks. Um, but look, like there's no clearance in there at all to go through this metal can. Granted, there is a reasonable clearance there. But still, this case is not earthed. This is just ridiculous. And the rails, the traces are, you know, once again, there is clearance there, but like, oh, geez. Now, it's not illegal to have a metal case product that's with a two-pin power prong uh, that is not, uh, the, with the metal case not being earthed. You get that in audio-visual gear all the time and stuff like that. But it needs to be double insulated, and I'm not sure that this meets the requirements of a double insulated product. It's certainly not uh, marked as such anyway. Anyway, it's supposed to do some magic woo-woo uh, in terms of a switching between a capacitive load and an inductive load, it's just bulldust. We've got a bridge rectifier in here. There's nothing active. I don't think there's anything active going on. This is just going to measure the mains voltage. What a crock. Let's get that can off and see what's under there. Well done. That was hilarious. It wasn't even soldered properly. That was basically <laughs> almost nothing. Like an absolute sliver of solder holding that on. And oh, wow, look, it's a capacitor in a block. The same magic woo-woo block that we got in the previous one, except this has some extra digital wankery on top. That's it. <laughs> As if this switches 
between anything. Like, if you wanted to, okay, in theory, you could have a big inductive load in here and you could have a big capacitive load. And this is basically what it claims. And it claims that it switches between a capacitive load and an inductive load. And look what we've got inside here. From memory, the other one was like a couple of nanofarads or something. And that's all that's going to be in here. <laughs> They don't even try to hide it. It's not a generic potted block. It's a three microfarad uh, mains class 450 volt capacitor. <laughs> and I don't even have to reverse engineer the circuit to debunk this. You can see that the capacitor, it's two terminals were here. It's connected directly across the mains input. This is your, <laughs> this is your uh, active and this is your neutral here. It's connected directly across. That's it. So it doesn't matter what this is doing in here because all it is is a three microfarad capacitor across your mains. That's it. It's a power factor correction capacitor, which, as I said, actually has some legitimate purpose for an inductive load. But even then, it's, most of the time, this thing is actually going to cost you money not save you money. And that's only if you had an industrial power supplier or a retail power supplier that actually measures uh, power factor correction and you pay for apparent power. But like, as far as I'm aware, including Australia, most uh, countries do not have that. They only charge you for the number of watts consumed. That's it. They don't care about the power factor because, you know, things are pro like going to relatively even themselves out. But if, as I say, if you've got a big industrial factory with huge motors and stuff like that, yeah, you might have, you know, banks and banks of huge uh, power factor correction capacitors. But one of these inside your box ain't going to do diddly squat. <coughs> So contrary to their marking, there is clearly no inductive load in here and there's no ability to switch in an inductive load. They've got a 78L05 regulator here. They've got a, a bridge rectifier, which basically comes uh, capacitively uh, divided really from the uh, mains here through this resistor. There's diddly squat. There's no switch in. There's no inductive load. There's no nothing. This thing simply displays the voltage or does some other display woo woo you don't even have to power this up to know that this is bullshit and this thing is supposed to have uh, surge absorbing as well so i expected like at least a mov in there but nah diddly squat all right, let's just give you a quick demo of this. What I've got is my uh, power analyzer here, which allows us to display real power in watts and also uh, reactive power and the power factor as well. And I'm just measuring an oscilloscope here, which is a typical example of a modern product with a switch in power supply. It's non-power factor corrected. So it's not gonna have a terrific power factor. It's very common, nothing wrong with the scope. It's just the way it is. So let's have a look at the power here. Please forgive uh, the display here. Yes, there is like a line or a couple of lines missing <laughs> through the LCD there. But anyway, it's almost like 20 watts here. So this is actually real, what's called a real power. And if you get an electric bill that, and you're charged in kilowatt hours, you're charged in real power. You're charged in watts or kilowatts as opposed to reactive power, which is what this thing is trying to actually correct. So so even if you were able to fix the power factor correction of uh, the products that you're drawing, in most cases, even for my uh, commercial office here, and I've got like a commercial office rate, I'm still paying for real power. They haven't installed a, a apparent power meter. It's a real power watt meter. So there you go, I think it's about 19.1 watts there. And if we switch over to apparent power, it's about 32. So that gives us a power factor of about 0.57 there. It's just a factor uh, between the two. So you can see it actually draws significant uh, power, like it has, you know, not a great power factor. So what I'm gonna do now is plug in the woo woo device right next to it. Yes, I've got it out of the case. Don't do this at home, kiddies. Hope it doesn't blow up. Let's plug it in. I've soldered the uh, capacitor back into it and let's go. There we go. 242 volts, uh, 249. So it's not even uh, that accurate there. So it's plugged in and what's happened? So it's drawing a smidgen more real power there. Look at that. 
It's drawing 85. Anyway, look, the power factor has, has dropped to 0 0.22. Plugging in this magic woo-woo device has actually made the power factor worse. It's drawing more apparent power, a lot more apparent power. So right there, it is absolutely busted. Not only does it not work, it if you were being charged for apparent power, then you'd be charged a lot more for it just by plugging in this device. It's ridiculous. It's just an absolute joke. It just doesn't work with modern products like this that have a bad uh, power factor like this. It's the opposite of what you want. You don't want a capacitive power factor correction device. But like I said, it's not going to do anything. In fact, it's just going to uh, draw more power because you've got to run the uh, display on it. So it's going to draw a little bit more power even if you charge for the real power. It does absolutely nothing. As you can see, this is what the Woo Woo device draws on its own. There you go. Draws almost a watt because it's got to drive the uh, seven segment displays there. So, yeah. You just, <laughs> you're paying for a device that just draws an extra watt and saves you no power, no money at all. Okay, let's try an inductive motor product. This is my uh, air filter here in the lab. It's a real good one, Blue Air, and it's got a big ass fan in it, okay? So a big ass inductive fan. Yes, it does have like an electronic uh, controller and stuff like that in it, but it's predominantly a an inductive fan. Sorry about the noise here, but it is quite loud. I've plugged it in without the Woo Woo device, okay? Real power here, 93 odd watts, and Reactive power 103, not a, a, about, you know, 0.9 power factor. Let's actually plug in our Woo Woo device and we'd actually expect it to maybe improve it a tad. So 0 0.90, let's plug it in. There you go, 0 0.914, it's gonna, it's getting better, sorry. Didn't see that. It's getting better, it's getting better. So it's actually improved the power factor a little bit but what you're paying for is real power. So it's not going to improve that. It's just going to take an extra watt. <coughs> Fail. So there you have it. Don't buy one of these things. They are just scams. All they do is put a capacitor across your mains and that doesn't save you any money. It's actually only going to cost you money. The basic engineering behind this is like so fundamental that... <laughs> It's just a joke. Don't waste your money. There's only one place for these turds, and that's down in there. Catch you next time.